First check that if we have volume. Hello. Looks like. Okay. So today we are we are not going to leave yet our uh, Snow White exercise because. Um, uh, by the way, I have decided to use the exercise to to show some concepts that uh, you know I regular. I think last year it was done like uh, theoretically. I was just showing you with uh, equations and, but now I have decided just to show you with uh, with the example. Okay. Uh, yeah. So what we have done uh, last lecture, I think, was to we calculate the lecture before the plateau duration and that we will all agree that um, was when this delta p became negative okay or changed from positive to negative then we discussed during the last lecture that uh, when we reach that point then the two pressures seen from both sides have to be equal there is because the choke is fully open okay and i told you essentially uh, these points are not exactly in the same place they might be a few meters away but when the choke is open, they're essentially very similar, very close. Okay, so we make a trick that simply we use now our goal seek. Okay, we use this uh, tool, but you can use basically any solver. And uh, you force it to change the rate of the field. And remember here we have made that the rate of the well is dependent on this cell and the rate of the template. Okay, so that's why we change one and, uh, and the change will propagate throughout the, the row. So that's why it was so important not to freeze it, even though for all of this period it was going to be constant, we just want the well rate to be dependent on that particular year. Okay. <coughs> yes, so, and we made some comments, uh, I made some comments about how commercial simulator works. You're going to work with a commercial simulator um, later called um, a Gap and Prosper. Prosper is a well simulator and GAP is like a network simulator. But they work, essentially you have a system of equations. Okay, In my case we did the tally here for, for our system, but essentially in reality you have not only pressure, but you also have temperature and drop. Okay. And then I have just to find an efficient way to solve that system of equations that might not be very easy if I have, for example, the choke equation that I showed you, you know, is quite uh, ugly, has a square root of a ratio of a exponent, and, uh, and you know, it might be difficult to converge. Okay, and I told you that if, if you have that kind of method, the rates that you obtain, they are a function of the opening. So you have to put a solver on top of a solver, and that solver is sometimes called optimizer, even though we're not really optimizing here, we are just solving okay for that particular thing but it can be used for example the same structure if you have for example gas lift and you want to find out which gas lift rate gives you highest oil production you can use that you can for example say I want to minimize water production and then you have to choke some wells that have high water cut okay so you use exactly the same structure so that's why it's called optimizer but in our case, that we want to get one particular rate, it will be simply a solver, okay, a solver on top of a solver. And you will see in the in the laboratory tutorials we are going to have about Gap and Prosper, you will see these two iterations happening, okay. So you have to change that and you have to converge the system and see if it's equal or not to the rates that you wanted, and then you change once more the opening and then it solves. You have like two loops, you have like two layers. Yeah, I show you the choke equation, I uh, show you how it looks like. We are going to have hopefully, a, maybe let's see today, a short exercise on that. Okay, but uh, like I say, uncertain, especially for multi-phase flow, uh, very di a bit difficult to converge, not very accurate, so we simply you take out of the picture. Okay, and that's that's kind of a valid approximation. Okay, uh, what else? Yeah, okay. So, I just want, uh, like I say, working on that exercise, okay, based on the exercise, let me just copy here because you don't have the table from last time. 
So I will simply copy that table to to the journal. And I told you that you should try to do it yourself at home um, to reproduce what I have done. You will have to do it anyhow in the exercise. I hope to publish the first exercise set sometimes by the end of this week or early next week. Okay, And it will be mostly focused on what we have discussed so far and what we will discuss next week. Uh, sorry, will be published in the end of next week. Okay, So it will be based on what we have discussed so far and also what we will cover next week. So now I want to make a plot of two things. Okay. So in this axis, the secondary y-axis, we are going to make the rate of the field. Okay. And the rate of the field has simply a behavior that is constant, and then at some point I reach the end and then it starts to decline. And we said that point here was around maybe 20. Okay, it happens between year 20 and 21. Okay, we are not sure where exactly. Okay, years. But now I want to plot just to, you know, consolidate um, what we discussed last class. Okay, and just to check that it was understood. Uh, the evolution of each one of the main pressure points in the system. Okay, remember we had reservoir, flowing bottom hole, we have wellhead, and we have um, <coughs> template, and we have plane pressure. Okay, all of these pressures, five. So I want just to show how these pressures change with time. Okay, so let's start with maybe the easiest. Separator pressure is low, right? It's 30, and actually doesn't change with time. We know we can change it, okay, it has been done sometimes, but we, you know, everybody doesn't want to change unless it's strictly necessary, okay, so that will be P separator. Now, uh, let's see, reservoir pressure is declining, right, because we are draining material out, and we know from our material balance equation that says PR should be PRI set R set RI 1 minus the recovery factor. Okay? That means that if I have I recover more and more from this field, then this one should go down. Okay? You have like a ratio. Uh, this number is becoming okay, smaller and smaller because it's becoming the R recovery factor is becoming closer to one, so that number is becoming smaller and smaller. And even though we have some variation here of set that we don't know exactly how to know, actually this one dominates, okay? The, that part is becoming smaller and smaller and is making the pressure go smaller also and smaller. Let's see the recovery factor. Oh, I think we didn't plot it, okay. Now let's plot it very quickly. Let's compute it very quickly here. The recovery factor. Okay, so we have recovery factor is how much I have produced divided by, in that particular year, divided by, by how much is in place. Okay, so initially, the first year, you don't recover anything, but then you get, I think that's not a good format. We should change it to, okay, and then reduce. Okay, so you see we go all the way to 66%, okay, which is not bad for, for gas, uh, dry gas. Okay, dry gas, usually we have high recovery factor, unless something, something happens, something goes wrong. Okay, so that number, that difference you have here, this number is one, and in year one will be zero. Okay, so that pressure will be very similar. R reservoir pressure will be very similar to initial. 
okay, will be equal. But then as I progress, this number becomes 0.66, then the difference will be 0.33, and then it's how much I'm scaling down the reservoir pressure. Okay, so it, it goes something like that. Let's make it up here, the pressure. Those don't confuse with the rate, but here we have reservoir pressure. Now we have to have to find the intermediate points, okay, which might be a bit uh, a bit challenging. So do you want to start from closer to the separator and back, or you want to start from reservoir and down? No, okay, reservoir and down. So let's say PWF. What should be what should happen with PWF? We know PWF, right? If if in if in in doubt you use the equation Q of the well was C R P R squared minus PWF squared to the power of N, right? N Okay, so we are saying at least in this period that rate is constant. Okay, DC and N they are constant. That pressure is going down, and therefore this one has to go down, right? Simply to keep the same rate. Or if you see it in another way, if you clear the pressure PWF, that correct I think okay so you see all of these are constant this part is constant so that guy is going down therefore this one is also going to go down okay so the P let's put it in green PWF will be also like that okay what about um, uh, okay so let's move to wellhead exactly the same right you have the same equation the rate is fixed and then you're reducing that PWF is going down so PWH should, should also go down right okay PWH now let's stop there and go back to the separator and let's move from separator upstream to the PLEM, okay, the pipeline entry module. How is that pressure going to be? Hmm? Going to be constant, right? Because we the same, we are looking at P PLEM and P PLEM we know that the equation of the field C pipeline P PLEM squared minus P um, separator to the power of 0.5, right? So if at least in this period, okay, we, we are not sure, we know it's going to change because the rate will change from here down, okay? But at least from the plateau period, we know this guy is constant, this rate is constant, therefore that should be also constant, okay, the plem. So, um, now I'm getting into trouble with the colors. So here is constant, but then at some point here, because that rate, see, this rate is going down, okay, then, and that is constant, this should also go down, okay? So let's make it from here, it will go down. We are at the PLEM, now we go back to the template, okay? And where should we draw the template? The template, the same reasoning, okay, P of the template, Q of the template, which is constant in the plateau period, flow line, P template minus P plem, square 0.5. Okay, so again the same thing in the plateau. This guy is constant. This guy we found now is constant, and then this guy should be constant. Okay, but 
Remember what happened at the end of the plateau, exactly here. Okay, it became the same as this pressure, PWH. So if, if we are going to paint it, we should paint it. Let me see which color. Let's use orange. I hope all of you can see these colors. Okay, it's constant. That will be P template. That's not a good color. P plem. Okay, at which point they become the same. Okay, and then you have one unique point, then the orange and the blue will decline the same way. Okay, will follow the same curve. So in the exam, if I ask you to make that plot for another system, you should be able to, you know, to reason with the equations, with the assumptions, what is constant, what is not, you should be able to make this plot. Okay. Uh, where where do we have the choke here? What is the choke? We know that delta P of the choke is the difference between PWH minus P template, right? Therefore, the delta P of the choke is going to be all of this area here. And you see how it's, I'm having to open and open and open until finally both points are the same. Okay, so that area here is delta P of the choke. And in part of that region, if you calculate the ratio, okay, what I mentioned before, uh, let, let's do it, you know, I, I'm going to spoil my, let's, um, because I don't want to spoil the compression part, but let's see, let's add one more column, the recovery factor I'm going to place um, here. Very important for reservoir engineers planning the outtake and planning the exploitation of the field, they always have to monitor the recovery factor, okay? Because it's like a KPI that they use to say, we're doing things in an optimal way. We want to get most of the reserves out and don't leave much, much behind, okay? And here we have uh, the ratio that I mentioned, which is uh, P, was P downstream the choke divided by P upstream, right? So that will be P uh, template divided by P uh, downstream divided by P upstream, and that is uh, P uh, WH that doesn't have any units. And here we say that is P WH. Uh, divided by P template. Sorry, the opposite, right? You're still asleep and I'm also asleep, looks like. You have to wake up. Remember the ratio that I told you that was critical flow? If it's below, uh, it's around 0 0.5, 0 0.6. Okay, so for all of these points up to maybe here, it's going to be in critical flow. Okay. Remember I told you, just to, to refresh, we have flow. The choke can be represented, no matter which geometry, can be represented by a converging section where you are reducing the area, okay, you are increasing the speed, and then with that, you're burning a lot of energy. Okay? Any design, no matter which, all of them can be represented like that. Okay? But if you have that, then it comes a point that the velocity of the fluid becomes equal, or at least comparable to the velocity of sound. 
okay? And the velocity of sound is what transfer any pressure change or any pressure variation throughout the system. Okay? If I have here someone, for example, changing that pressure up and down, then it will propagate with the velocity of sound upstream. And then that pressure will also have experienced the same variation. Okay? If, like if I make a noise here, that's why it reaches all of you. Okay? That, that perturbation is traveling at that speed. But when the fluid travels at that speed, then it cannot propagate upstream. It can simply just stay here. Okay? Then it becomes choked flow, critical flow. Okay? So that's what's happening in all of these first points of... Um, okay? And in critical flow... So l let's, let's copy and take that. Okay, here it doesn't make any point here. The two pressures are the same, so I don't... Uh, okay, remember that a critical flow... There are some equations to calculate it. If I have P... Okay, here I have P1, and P2 should be actually here. But I told you that the pressure doesn't change much from P3, okay? Because we have losing that pressure, and then it's not reversible. We cannot recover that pressure that we lost, okay? So critical flow occurs when we have uh, P2, P1 is less, okay, around or equal than maybe 0 0.5, 0 0.6. Then the table won't fit here, so I have to make a new page. Okay, so that's the ratio. So probably all of these points, we're not sure exactly which ones, but probably all of these points are in critical regime. Okay, in that, for all of those points, the velocity of the throat, it will be... Um, equal to the velocity of sound of the mixture okay and the, all of these are what we call in the subcritical Okay, this, this number is called the critical pressure ratio. And that, that can be estimated with an equation, okay? Usually there are different models that they assume different choke things that happen across the choke. And you have different expressions for um, pressure ratio, generation ratio. Okay, uh, let's now, I want a few things that will help you to make the exercise. Okay, first I want to see, um, I want to discuss a bit about how to make subs. Okay, in, in Excel BBA, we are going to be using, mo most, most of the time we're going to be using function, okay, which you know already how to make. The function is def, uh, you declare the function, the name of the function, okay, so we say first functions, 
Okay, so we say function, we put the name of the function, and here we put the arguments, argument one, argument two, and so forth. Very similar to any pro other programming language. And then you say here the instructions that will happen, and then you click end function. Okay. But if you want the function to return the value, you have to call that value here, name function will be equal to some operation, okay, some, some function of arguments one, arguments two, and so forth. If you have a very long, like, a process that you have to compute one factor, then another factor, then solve, you have to do it, it's better to split it and do it in steps. Don't, don't do it, don't try to put everything in one line, okay? But we also have something called subs, okay? And subs are essentially scripts. And these are simply a set of instructions that I tell the computer um, it might use any input, might not use any input, but simply a set of instructions okay, to execute. The functions are called on each cell um, with the FX button. Okay, we already saw the functions that we program. If we go to the cell and we press FX, then we get the function. Okay, that's the way we use we use functions. Okay, while scripts they are are run uh, from the BBA module or by making buttons on the spreadsheet okay one another difference is that you have to save that usually in um, remember we discussed last time is like a common repository called okay um, called module we have to save it here just make it maybe a space okay it's saved in a module usually because I want the function to be available for every sheet for all the Excel book okay so it's saved say in a module okay well, the BBA can be saved in module, in the module, or in a spreadsheet object, okay, which in our case, because we didn't explore that tree very well, but this will be, you see, each sheet has its own object here, okay, so you can save it actually in each sheet, in each, um, depending on which one you know it's you you are using the data from okay but you can also save it here in a common module in module or in each sheet okay so how do we uh, I want to show you just now an example, but basically we say sub, and we say the name of the sub, okay, and then we have, depending or not, we can have arguments or not. Arguments are optional, okay, because if it's simply a set of instructions, you are going to say, for example, copy these values, run the goal seek, that's what we're going to do here. Then you don't need really any argument. All the arguments will be in the Excel sheet. Okay. 
and then you click ends up and doesn't return anything okay maybe it just simply does something on the excel sheet okay so i have made uh here the gosic bba and maybe we should take a simpler example first you see you go i went to sheet one that's where i'm going to make my computations okay that's where i'm going to apply uh the gosic and the gosic essentially will be applied to each column to each one of these cells and i have to change this number okay change drive this value to zero by changing this rate the field rate drive this value to zero by changing that rate and in this case i did it last class because there were only five but if i have you know hundred thousand then that's not a uh, okay I, I i can tell my little sister you know baby sister to do it for me one by one but will be a bit unfair right okay so let's uh, take first before taking the goal seek i will take this away okay just to make it simpler okay. sub declaring the sub i have to put the name of the sub and in this case it doesn't have any arguments okay now i just declare when i do that automatically if you do sub name test and then I click enter, automatically it tries to close, okay? It tries to be smart. Then I say, a good way, that's the way, that's the syntax how I address any value in the cell, okay? You have to put worksheets, then in parentheses, the sheet name, and then you have to put cells, this is the row number, and this is the column number, okay? And then point value. So this instruction essentially is retrieving the value of cell in row 2 and in 2 so that will be b2 okay so if we say in our in our excel sheet that will be retrieving this value okay and it's going to save it in memory it's going to save it in variable x okay then i can do something with that variable okay i can multiply i can divide i can do a complex operation with that variable let's see here we just simply divide by two so we say we create another variable called b x divided by two note that i i i in this case i don't have to declare the variable not even which type it is okay many programming languages you have to to say if it's x if it's going to be float integer string okay in this case because i'm not saying anything it will by default try to use like a generic type okay which is not the most efficient but it's it's uh, you know it makes our life simple and then what i'm doing here i can also use the same syntax to simply write values on the sheet okay so i use exactly the same sheet name now it's uh, row 2 but I want to write in column 4 column 4 is uh, D okay so I want to write read that number do something with that number and then write it here okay that's exactly what this um, this thing is doing okay I save it and then to run it I you have to click here to the top and I just click run go back to my sheet okay and now i have that number. okay if for some reason you want to don't want to run it from here will be something that you want to run many many times you can also come uh developer no first you have to insert you can insert um Yeah, you can insert a shape, okay? You can put, for example, here. You can give it a name. You say, click here to compute, okay? And then you right-click on it, and you say, assign macro, and then you select the only macro we have. Okay, you see that the macro, the, the address is saying, is in sheet one, which is data, okay, the first one. 
then and it's named GoSeq BBA. And by doing that, I don't have to go back to the BBA module. I can simply say run it from here, okay, and it will compute. Okay, very handy. I guess if you know when you go to a company, you won't have you maybe won't have MATLAB, won't have Python, won't have anything. You have Excel, okay, and they hope you to do everything with Excel, okay. But if you know this, it can save you a lot of work, okay. You maybe you can go home early. Okay, unless until they install MATLAB for you or Python or whatever. But if you know these tricks, you, you can save a lot of time. Okay, so now let's do exactly what, what we were in that clear, more or less. Okay. So I have one thing also is that I have put here the sheet name in in a separate location such that if by some reason I decided now to rename my sheet to data two, for example. I don't have to go in each one of these locations and change it individually. I might have 100 lines of code and I have might be calling that sheet name in all of these 100 lines. So I will have to do it, you know, and, and spoil my code. So I simply I create this variable called data and then it will, if I have to change it, simply I change it in one line. It's very good for, for error tracking. Okay, so let's go to the go seek. Okay, and here I'm doing the things a bit proper, but you really, I don't think you have to do it that proper. Another uh, good practice is um, indentation, okay? Because tells the sub does the first line and then you indent, okay? And that means everything inside is part of this sub. Okay, that's also a kind of a good practice. But it will also, Excel is smart, doesn't want to make our life difficult, so simply if you erase it, uh, Okay, it will run the same. Okay, some other languages like Python, it it needs the indentation. Are indentation sensitive? Okay, so here I'm doing it um, like the I'm declaring declaring objects. Okay, I'm declaring variables. So I say first, sh will be an object called worksheet. That is an object that is available in, um, yeah, just before that, let me just copy this so you have this example. And you don't have to go to the video to get it. Okay, here we are, that sheet name, we are addressing that value and we are writing it back but if you see here I didn't have to create even though that's like an object okay called sh uh, the sheet I didn't have to declare it I simply call it and Excel is smart and it created automatically for me okay one way that is a bit more um, formal okay, it's now I lost it because I copy and uh, we lost the button so we have to make it again yeah. let's um it's already 10, so let's take a break and I will bring up the code for, for the GOSIC, okay? Let's take a break first. Just to check, okay. <coughs> yeah. So one more thing before we do the GOSIC. Um, 
that is very helpful if you have any problems on the sub this also works with functions okay you can use a debugging run it in a debugging mode okay the debugger you first put a point where you want so it will run the computer will run up to that point and in that point it will stop okay for doing that you run it this is the same example I haven't done yet the goal six simply I'm reading value from a cell I'm dividing that value by two and then I'm writing that value to another cell okay so I just run and it will show highlighted in yellow that means that that's the way it went I, I told it to run up down to that place and then to run one by one you click here um, debug okay and you have to click F8 okay so for example let's see how it works with this keyboard okay so now it executed that instruction and now if you see the value of x will be exactly what it read from the sheet okay now if you click again once once again f8 it will do the next instruction where this variable b will be divided by two and then that's the last instruction where it writes that value to 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 the cell okay if you keep the point here when you run the macro from the interface from this button it will stop in the same place okay uh, also if you don't want to see anything in between but simply you want to run from one point to another you can do it live and press F5 okay so it skips everything in between and simply jumps from one to the other okay so F8 one by one and if you have another function here it will go inside the function and it will do debugging of the function with F8. F5 has to have two points and then it jumps between point and point. Okay? So let's put that here on the on our notes. Okay, debugging And debugging can be done for functions or subs. So first add a red point and it has to be on the frame that is gray. How do you write gray with A or E? Do you remember? A? Other red point on the frame, the gray zone, okay, that, that is to the left. You have to place it here. And then you have to use F8 is instruction by instruction. Or F5 to jump between points. Okay. And if there is no point, simply will execute until the end of the function, until the end of the instructions. If no more points, okay, till function end. Okay, now let's go to our goal seek finally. So I didn't lost it, I, it was here all the time. So here I'm creating this worksheet. I'm assigning that worksheet that will be exactly the one called data. Okay, set. I'm defining. That's. Uh, then I'm um, creating a variable called target. Okay, and that variable has a long. Uh, it will be kind of a numeric with with digits. Okay, with decimal points. So I'm defining that. That's something we didn't do before. Okay. Then I define that the target, I want to drive that value to zero, okay, which is the delta P of the choke, has to be exactly zero. And here I have to do a looping throughout all the, all the rows, okay? So let's see here, let's change it back to the number that it had before, that it was 20 million, 
remember I have to put the number don't link it to a cell otherwise the goal seek won't work okay so I want to apply the solver in this column column O okay and changing this number based on this number in column C okay so the objective is in O the variable is in C and I want to apply it from uh, row 45 to 49 yes 45 to 49 and C and O okay so from row 45 to 49 I have to create a tag the goal seek uses a tag okay to 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 choose each cell doesn't use this same nomenclature okay that uses numbers but uses a tag so the tag will be the objective will be O and the variable will be C, yes, and it will be C O forty five, changing C forty five, O forty six, changing C forty six, and so forth. Okay, and here is where actually I solve the GOSIC. Okay, in the spreadsheet for this particular object O forty five. So let's see if that makes sense. That will be the first one O forty five. Okay, it's shown here. Uh, apply the goal seek and you want to drive that value to at uh, the target that we defined before and the target will be zero okay by changing cell and this is part of the syntax of the the syntax is give the do put dot goal seek say what is the target and tell me what is the variable okay and the variable will be c45 in this case uh, which C45 is here. Okay. And that's it. And then you go to the next and it will go one by one solving and finding the the plateau uh, the the decline rate. Okay? So to run it as I mentioned I th hope this button works. Okay? And now that that was it found all of these numbers. Okay? Very handy, very useful. Uh uh, so I recommend you to get at least familiar with. Okay, you don't have to be scared. It's you don't have to be a programming wizard. Simply understand more or less the syntax, what is happening in each line, and if you have any questions, ask Google. Okay, it's very helpful to ask Google, Google for to go to Google for for answers. Clear? I hope that's a yes. Or you're either asleep or three options: sleeping didn't understand anything or everything is clear okay 100 percent okay now I, I ask you here in this example what will happen if I I didn't have I, it's not choke simply I produce this field instead of mode a I produce it in mode B completely in decline should we run one example with with that? Should we run do one run with with that case? Okay, so I will say maybe start in twenty. For that, I have to use the goal seek. Okay, for all of these uh, years. And then, what do I have to do with the goal seek to find if I keep it producing as much as possible? Simply for each year, I have to drive this number to zero, right? So let's see what do we get if we do that. Okay. Uh, it will go from uh, 24. Okay. So now we have to change here to go from 24. If you want to make it prettier, prettier, you can say that you want to read that number from the cell, and in the cell you can put two here. Let's say start row, and then end row. Okay, if you want to make it pretty, such that you don't have to go back and forth to the to the interface, you can put here from 45 to 49, and then you read that number to your sub. Okay. Run macro. I hope it works. Okay, it gave me an error, and let's see what the error was. Was able to solve successfully up to here 
but here the rate of 20 is actually too too <coughs> big okay and we get an error in pwh available okay so what happened here how do we compute pwh available think uh, pwh is with the tubing equation right what is a tubing equation if you remember qg ct pwf squared e to the s minus pwh squared okay then i have to clear pwh will be uh, the square root of qg yes okay so if this value is very small and this value is very very big okay i might have an, a case that this guy becomes negative and then excel doesn't know how to handle complex number and simply tells you a value here okay this will be a value and i think they put hashtag value error in excel okay so that means that the rate we're using essentially i have to use vacuum to produce it okay if i want to produce that rate i have to go to a negative pressure it won't be physically possible i have to to put to put vacuum okay it's even less less than zero okay so if, if you are programming your model now going back to this case that we have this solver okay that I told you that's what happens in real life this software you have to be very careful because you might have these value errors when you're solving okay if you guess you are guessing the rate right and you guess a value too big that's what happened here I'm guessing that the value will be 20 and then suddenly I have a negative value error everything collapsed okay so you have to have these checks of the initial conditions that that allow you to get to um, um, a solution okay so after all of that discussion what do we have to do here to fix it okay to use a smaller rate and let's say here it was 11 so i know it has to be less than 11 so let's try simply 11 e to the 6 okay here i don't get any value error simply negative numbers so it should be fine i want to drive this to zero and then i apply uh, the solver the goal seek from 45 to 49 okay great now you see how much i'm producing if i were to produce this field in mode um mode uh decline right in mode b Okay, you see the rate is this guy here okay and you see the rate initially is very high and it will let me just maybe copy this chart without any of these guys here Okay, that if it's, it's operating in decline, if I... <coughs> okay. Instead of having um, the, the original, there was something like this, right? And then in year 20, 20 something, you start to decline.
Yes? Um, yeah, so just one, one comment here also that this rate, okay, that I have here, even though theoretically or from the models or I can, so theoretically the maximum well rate is, uh, how much do we have here per well? Uh, 5.7, okay. Q of the well is 5.7. Okay, that's uh, actually a, a very high value. To, to be able to produce that rate, I don't think there is any well now nowadays that has such such a high production. Okay, wells, gas wells. Um, so the biggest biggest gas wells, and we are saying here offshore, which are the biggest, okay, the biggest offshore gas wells produce at most. Uh, something between 3 e to the 6 okay 3 million standard cubic meter per day because simply that tubing size i think this tubing size uh, of 3 is a tubing size tubing diameter of um, i think it's something between 7 and 9 inch and that's already quite big for the hole okay for the holes that i have so if i want to produce more i should use a bigger tubing and simply physically i cannot fit a bigger uh, pipe there and also if I start to produce too high from that well unless I have multilaterals unless I have a very big uh, thickness it will start to create some problems with deformation okay we'll start to create some some sand uh, collapse of deformation some sand okay so even though just to keep you in mind my modeling okay, or my equations that I have they tolerate everything okay I have a big rate low rate everything but you always have to QC your results with experience, okay, or with the practical thing. The practical, always look, you say, oh, that's great. I go to my management, and now my well can produce so much, okay. That's perfect. But in reality, um, there are some practical limitations why I cannot produce such a high rate, okay. Tubing, here I have sand production, okay, formation collapse. Okay, now the next thing I want to introduce is something called uh, production potential. Okay, and the production potential is the maximum rate of the production system uh, versus cumulative production okay. so it's the maximum rate that I can get from that system versus cumulative production So typically, okay, for for example, for dry gas, if I plot here, remember cumulative production is GP going from zero, and then I have Q max. That's typically something like a, a nonlinear line like that. Okay. So now I, I just want, and this I think it has been a bit difficult to explain uh, for the last years, and I have tried all kind of approaches. But if all else is fixed, all else is fixed, that means it's constant. Let's say it's constant. Okay, number of whales. Okay. Um, choke opening 
uh, number of pipes, etc. Okay, then this Q max is only a function of cumulative production. Okay, how much I can produce, you see here how much I'm producing, that's the maximum I can produce in any given year, okay? But I'm telling you, it's not a function of really of time, the maximum that I can produce. It's simply a function of how much I have drained, okay? Why? Because it's only a function of, okay? If we say here Q max is only a function, in this example, okay, of reservoir pressure, right because if I have certain if I have certain reservoir pressure okay I will have certain maximum rate that I can achieve okay and reservoir pressure is only a function of GP right that we have established before by material balance it's only a function of how much I have drained and therefore in conclusion or then Q max is also only a function of GP, which is a, is a, is a bit strange, okay? But, um, so let's make that plot, okay, f that we, um, j just maybe to understand uh, a, a bit better, okay? But, but essentially, what I'm saying, the maximum, the production potential of the system is simply the maximum rate I calculate, in my case, no choke, zero, okay? Versus cumulative production, okay? Here I have calculated with time, and here I say that, le let's do it against cumulative production because I know it's not a function of time, it's only a function of PR, okay? And PR is actually only a function of GP. Okay, so let's plot it, see, I have to plot here column D, versus column uh, Q, okay, C, D versus, D versus Q, should be x first x is x is gp and then it should be c no sorry that should be d right That should be C. Okay, and I'm not call it. I'm not going to call it now field rate, but this is the maximum field rate. Okay, that is QF max, and uh, this 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 one this axis. This will be cumulative production. so big put three here okay okay so that's the production potential for my for for my case for this particular case
Okay, so first one thing, what is my, uh, remember, what was the plateau rate in the in the previous case? 20 million, right? Yeah. So we come here, what will happen at 20 million? After 20 million? We have a division, right? Before 20, so when I'm using 20 million for the first part of the time, I will be able to produce in plateau rate. But after that, when the choke is fully open, I'm producing actually a potential. Yes? Because essentially, I'm producing the, 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 the most that the system has to give. Okay? The, okay in, in my, I'm talking now, when producing in plateau rate, okay, I have like two parts, okay? When time is less than t plateau, okay, then I'm producing below the potential, right? I could produce more. I saw now I can produce 60, I can produce 40, but I'm not producing that number. I'm producing much less, okay? But when I'm producing a t greater than the plateau, I'm producing at potential. That means that at that point I have fully open choke and I produce as much as I can produce. And these two two times or these two parts, you can see them here when you have the intersection of the potential with 20. Okay? This intersection here. So this is saying that at this cumulative production, to the right, if I keep producing more than that, I will enter in decline. Because I won't be able to produce 20 anymore. I have to produce less. Okay, so this particular graph is saying that for GPs, so let's say, let's state it very clearly. If producing 20 million standard cubic meter per day, okay, when I reach around GP around 150, okay, that will be 150 e to the 9 I will have to, I will enter in decline, okay the field enters in decline okay from that point on when I get to 150. All the others, all, uh, uh, for production, for GP below 150, e to the 0 9 standard cubic meter, it will be possible to produce at plateau rate. Yes, that's what this graph is telling me, okay? I'm saying the maximum that the field can produce is only a function of cumulative production. Why? Because I know this number is only a function of reservoir pressure, okay? And reservoir pressure is only a function of GP, okay? So, and this has been verified. Okay? I know that my field initially can produce like 52 million and then I can produce more and more and more, but at certain GP, that's where I will be able to produce 20. If I keep open choke, that's where I will be able to produce. So this is what he's saying is that for GPs, when I have reached 150, that means when I have reached certain reservoir pressure, okay, I won't be able to sustain anymore this rate without doing something, okay? So creating additional wells, uh, increasing the cubic size, doing something, okay? But for all that, Cumulative productions before that, okay, for all 150 and less, I will be able actually to produce that rate. Okay, so let's calculate now. Let, let's estimate using this curve how much, um, how much, you know, what plateau time do we get? Okay, just to verify. So for doing that, I I see that this curve is relatively linear. So I try to make a trend line, straight line. Uh, the intercept should be 
what is the first point here? 51.7. Just to put some numbers, okay, it's not necessary, but just to put some numbers. Okay, so it's not exactly linear, you see you have some deviation, but it's, let's say it's, it's uh, linear enough. Display equation, the equation Okay, so that's the equation of that curve. So we want to know that gives me Q, Q max as a function of GP. Okay, so let's copy that equation. Can I copy that equation? Again. For our case, for Snow White, Snow White, this curve can be approximated. The QPP production potential, okay, that's how we are going to call it. QPP, QPP. It's equal to minus 2.09 e to the minus 4. Plus 5.17 e to the 0, 07. Okay. And I'm missing the GP. Times uh, GP. Okay. So here I'm going to say this production potential looks like this equation. Minus M, you have a slope called M, GP, plus QPPO. Okay which is a production at initial time, or at, at initial reservoir pressure. Production at initial reservoir pressure. Okay. And if you see I drain more and more and more from the reservoir, I will be able to produce less and less and less. Okay, so let's use that, what we said, we say, to find this GP, okay, this hundred and fifty, this number, to find our our task is find find GP star for which Uh, QPP equals to Q plateau. Okay, and Q plateau is 20 million. Because we know after that GP, I will enter in decline. Okay, and you will see why that's that GP is important. So we have 20 is equal to minus 2.09 e to the minus 4 times GP star plus 51 5.17 e to the 0 0.7 okay so GP star is uh, 5.17 e to the 7 minus 20 e to the 6 divided by minus 2.09 e to the minus 4 how much is that? We do it here in our Excel sheet. Okay, that would be actually this number here, minus 20, divided by I 
this should be actually plus right here, it's not minus. Divided by the slope, which dm is 2.09 e to the 4. To the minus 4. Okay? Exactly what we read before from the chart, okay? Just by naked eye. 151.8 e to the 9. Now I say you are, that's great Milan, you told me at which cumulative production, but why is that, what is that useful for? Hey, why do I need to know this GPT? Well, you know that from zero, from GP in this interval, okay, zero to GP star, I have been producing at constant rate, right? Is production at constant rate. Therefore, okay, that means that you were doing Q plateau, that, that means that GP star can be approximated as Q plateau times the time of the plateau, the duration, right? Because up to that point, I'm producing at a constant rate, okay? Therefore, I can know exactly with this curve I can know exactly that um, uh, GP over Q plateau. How much is that for our case? The duration of the plateau will be this number, and I produce that number in with a rate of 20 to the 6. Okay. Okay, 7589 days seven five is eight 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 nine or eight nine point three days okay and how much how many years is that seven five eight eight nine okay how many we have now remember this unit was standard cubic meter and this was standard cubic meter per day. Okay, so we eliminate these two and this gives me in this. Okay. And remember we said the uptime in our case here was 360 days per year. So then to find years I simply have to divide by 365 and how much is that? 7589. Okay, 20.79. Okay, so that's the usefulness of, of, uh, of uh, this production potential curve, okay? Was that more or less clear or not? Yeah? Now, I, I ask, so why, okay, that's another way to calculate plateau. But just to calculate this curve, okay, I already had to make my calculations. Okay, I already had to set up my model. I already had to solve with goal seek. So why, why now how can I use this equation or how can I? So let's say, for example, that now you want to produce, you're making this plateau sensitivity, right? That's something we discussed at the beginning of the course. You want to know if it's optimal to produce 20, 25, 30, or 15. Which one gives you the highest NPV, right? So, and you want to know the plateau end, for example, for a task, find plateau end for a plateau field, Q plateau, or for example, let's say 30. The question is, can I use the same procedure? Can I use the same equation, this equation here? You have to ask yourselves, has anything changed in the system if I use 30? Anything changed? I'm going to use the same number of wells. The tubing size is going to be exactly the same. Flow line size, 
pipeline size, everything is the same. Okay, I'm not going to change anything in my Excel sheet. Okay, therefore, if I calculate the potential curve, okay, it's going to give me exactly the same, right? No matter if I, if you know, if I change the plateau, it doesn't change the system. It's simply the same system that I'm trying to produce with higher rate or lower plateau rate. So both systems, both cases, okay, should have the same curve. Okay. So then, what is the procedure? I come with um, okay again. QPP should be equal to Q plateau, and that is equal to minus M GP star plus QPPO, and the Q plateau is thirty now. Okay, let's make a quick calculation here to see how much do we get. Um, okay, minus 30. Then I get so many days and then I have so many years. Okay, 14.23 years. Okay, T plateau, 14.33 years. Okay, now let's do it the right way. Okay, the way that we come to our model. Okay, we change here now the rate to 30. I say this field will be this rate and I fix it. Okay. Um, 30 million this should be 51.7 right oh I have to divide here by 30 okay, was a mistake 9.48 Okay, so I'm, I'm having here that the plateau is finishing, ending exactly between 9 and 10. Okay, I had a mistake in, in the, the equation, the QPPO minus uh, the plateau rate divided by M, and then I get the number of days, I have to divide by 30, and then I have the number of years, I divide the number of days by 365. So it's actually 948. Okay, so I get now up to that point, okay, and I know after that point I'm going to be operating in the in decline, okay. So let me change. Uh, let's calculate that number that will be from cell thirty-four to cell thirty-eight. We're going to take a break soon. Sorry, 30, yeah, 34 to 38. Oh, yeah. I, I doesn't like it because it's, it's, um, it's a formula, okay? So I have to put the number. Those are the issues you get when the uh, teacher has to show you in class live an exercise. And I get also in trouble, okay? It's not only you, I, I get also in trouble. But hopefully there are not too many bugs. So here for all of this is zero. I know the rate should be like more like 20. Now I change it to 20 for have a, having a better seed. Now I have to solve from 39 all the way to 44. Okay, and then finally I know the rate should be something like 10. That's a good seed initially. Let's see. Okay, and then I run again. It was from 44, 45 to 49. 
okay and that's my new profile yeah okay um, let me see where do I have here it should be time and time is um, I think it's B right <coughs> B and I simply reset this guy Okay, so that's the, it's not gas cumulative production, but that's the time. Okay, so that's the new, when I have another plateau, another plateau height, I simply have shorter plateau, okay, and then I'm entering the decline curve. But this point, we were able to find it with the production potential, because we didn't change anything in the system, number of wells was the same, Cubing size was the same, everything else, fluid was the same, so see if they can use that equation to find this endpoint. Okay? At what, what point is going to finish? Uh, yeah, let's take a, a break, okay? And we go to the kind of the last part. Check, 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 okay. So those were the results for 30. Okay, and uh, what I want to just like a last last uh, checkup, we take we have our potential curve right that we use to to estimate the duration of thirty, okay, and the duration of twenty that we see they match. We're doing it uh, stage uh, step by step by step. So in the case of thirty. Uh, when you reach, you see the end of the plateau is something between 9 and 10, this 9.48, right? So 30, you have a cumulative production of 9.86. So let's plot that number here. 30 together with 9.86, okay, which is very close to 98.6. Okay, it's very close. It's exactly here, someplace a bit less. Then you have uh, the next point that follows is uh, zero, year ten, so it's twenty-eight and one hundred and ten. Twenty-eight is someplace here, one hundred and ten. What should we divide this? Uh, it's um, 150, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, okay, so 110 will be here, 28, you're exactly on the line, and then you see, for example, another point 20, and then you have 146, 21, you see close to this line, 146 is someplace here, okay, and you are on the line. Okay. So for all points after time, this was after time 9.48 years. Okay. You are exactly on that line. You are producing basically a plateau. That means that for every GP, you are going to be producing the exact number. While for all the years before, after T, Q of the field, will be equal to QPP, okay? But before that, before uh, T plateau, then the Q of the field is actually less than the Q of PP, okay? Because I, I'm forcing it to be 30 exactly, and I could produce in, in theory much, much more, okay? Now, I just want to, to 
if we have an expression of so let's say if we have an analytical expression of the QPP it is possible to find to find an analytical expression for Q of the field okay because we know it has to be equal to QPP in that period but we have to and before that it will be simply constant okay so first a T plateau uh, if we make everything in terms of if the QPP is linear okay which is this case for dry gas okay we have the following equation minus m gp plus qppo okay. uh, the t of the plateau occurs when the end of the plateau occurs when uh, the q of plateau is equal to qpp is equal to minus m gp plus qppo after there we can simply clear that T plateau will be that's in days okay will be Q PPO minus Q plateau divided by M uh, sorry divided by 1 over Q plateau okay May we take one more step is GP star divided by Q plateau okay and GP star is this part here and um, yeah and then divided by 1 over Q plateau and that tells you that T plateau and that is in days it's um, Q PPO divided by Q plateau minus one okay all of that one over n okay if it's linear okay which in our case so I just say take advantage of this fact for this no white field because it it follows you see you saw that it follows more or less quite a straight line okay so you can do calculations manually but because it's linear you can use also this equation okay so just i let you decide what to use but you know you can save some time you don't have to do it time by time if you use this equation okay then we have that if the time is less than the t plateau that the end of the plateau okay then simply the q of the field will be q of the plateau however if the t is greater or equal than the t of the plateau then q of the field will be equal to the potential right okay and what is the expression of the potential in that case qpp minus m right and gp can be divided in two parts okay one is a plateau zero is remember the gp is the integral of zero to t of q of the field okay times dt plus qppo right but when we are in this period right we know that we have produced some part in plateau right so this term gpp is divided is split in two qpp will be equal to minus m q plateau times t plateau okay plus an integral from t plateau to t of the Q of the field 
dt plus qppo right i'm now expressing the production potential which is a linear expression right remember is qpp minus m gp plus qppo okay that's the expression but i know now we are in this regime so i have produced part of it in plateau mode which simply is that multiplication right and part of it i'm i don't know i will have some rate that i have to integrate from plateau to t okay but that rate is also this rate right because actually at that point after that point i will be producing at plateau so these two become the same so the final equation is like that q of the field okay because i'm exactly in the period what i'm producing at plateau m q plateau times t plateau plus t plateau to t q of the field dt yeah, m is multiplying only these guys plus q ppo okay and our intention is to find these guys okay this guy i know i impose it this guy i know i know how to calculate if i have my potential and this guy i know i calculate Okay. The only thing that is unknown is this guy, which is one equation with one unknown. Okay. So those of you good in math, how do you solve this equation? Okay, I, I leave it as a homework, but you know a solution to this equation is that the Q of the field is Q plateau times E to the minus M T minus T plateau. Okay? That's the solution to that to that equation. Okay, so that's what I have to substitute here. Okay, that's what I have if Q, so let's repeat it. If T is less than the T plateau, then I have that the Q of the field simply is Q plateau. If the T is greater than the T plateau, then the Q of the field will be Q plateau times E minus M T minus T plateau. Okay, where T plateau was Q PPO divided by Q plateau minus one, one over M. Right, that's the expression we had from before. So you see, there is there is a there is a there is another. Uh, I'm not sure if you heard of it, but there is a uh, a discipline called DCA, okay, which is decline curve analysis. Okay, that they assume that you have some different types of decline. Okay, they they say, well, if you have some well, it will decline like that or it will decline like that, or it will decline like that. And there are different types of decline, exponential, hyperbolic, and what is the last one? It's uh, asymptotic, I think, right? So you see here that we found, by theory, if the production potential is a line, then we find that it's actually an exponential, which somehow fits this theory or this uh, observations that the decline is exponential okay that the, the type of decline is exponential so let's put that here if the production potential is a straight line okay, 
then the 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 decline decline rates are exponential straight line with a straight line okay and I ask you if 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 you want to to go on we estimated now the the oh where is it okay we estimated that with using our excel sheet okay and i now ask you to try to estimate with that equation okay and compare them to see how how do they match how do they compare okay you see that the fitting we have done is not exactly linear but it actually has some nonlinearities here so it won't be it will be approximate but it, it's a kind of a good approximation, okay? Okay. So any any questions? No. You should have a lot of questions. Okay. You're going to go back home, and then you're going to do the exercise next week, and you're going to have a lot of questions. Okay. Okay, so now let's uh, take a short discussion and then we end up, I hope, we end up early, a bit early today. So, how to prolong plateau? Measures to prolong plateau. For example, in, in our case that we have here, we are producing 30 for nine years, but now the customer says, well, I would like to have for 15 years at least. So what is one option? What can I change in my system? I can change all of these, right? That I have done my Excel sheet to change. So let's see, let's look, go through that list and see how can we change. Can we change initially in place? No, right? That's nature. I'm, that I might have some uncertainty how much I have in place, right? I might not be sure if it's that number, we will see later 50% more, 50% less, but that's an uncertainty, not something that I decide. I have a bigger feel or a, I cannot decide I'm taller, I'm 180, I'm 190 or 175, okay, I cannot decide. Uh, can I decide production days per year? I can make my best, right, to produce 365 all of the time but usually that's something depends on operations, depends on type of platform, depends on, so that's not something I change. Temperature, definitely not. Initial pressure, definitely not. The C, can I change the C? That's the, the inflow back pressure coefficient. You, some of you say yes, they okay, have like a face like maybe, but you're a bit, a bit afraid. So what does it mean changing C, right? So let's go, that's our first option, okay? Change C. C, okay? And C, if you remember, is Q of the well. C, PR squared, PWF squared to the power of N. So if I increase C, what we want, increasing C, that will make the well more productive, okay? I can produce more with the same delta P. So that sounds like what we want, right? So how do I increase C? Fracturing, okay. Fracturing, acidizing, stimulation, okay. I try to to clear the pores if they have any f uh, drilling damage, okay. Or I want to ex, ex so if I have a vertical well, I want to increase the, spo the exposure of that well, okay? So I want to expand its radius of influence such that it will be easier for for uh, for gas or for, for the formation which is farther away from the well to flow towards the well, okay? Another approach could be to change the completion, okay? 
I make a completion that uh, uh, maybe the uh, uh, so that will be maybe making a longer well okay okay so longer well I for example make a multilateral okay make a because they will give me more production with the same drawdown okay longer well multilateral maybe a bigger borehole okay that will help so let's go on the list and see what else we have what else could we change and N depends on the flow regime on the porous media, right? So if I have laminar, if I have turbulence, so it's something like given by nature, something that I cannot change that much. CT, can I change this guy? Yes, right? Remember CT? Um, it was quite a few classes ago, I guess. Um, okay, the equation for CT... I hope you are you keep it in in mind. Okay, CT is that guy. So if I what can I change here? I cannot change the properties of the gas length. Maybe I can change, but not you know I'm bounded by the seabed and also the target location. I can change this thing. Okay, so I can make bigger. Basically, I change the C and I make a bigger diameter. This is actually CR, okay, C formation, and then CT, which is Q. Okay, so if I increase that number, then I will produce more, and to increase that is basically to increase tubing diameter. And that's why I told you, if you want to produce more from the well, one way will be to make a bigger tubing. But if you go more than 7, 9 inch, that's the limit. You cannot fit physically any bigger tubing on that well, okay, with the current uh, drilling strategy. Uh, yeah, let's go. What else? S. Can I change S? Like I said, you know, S has some dependence. Let's look at the equation. S has some dependence on the length and the, the angle, but actually when I have a target and, uh, and a seabed, it's really limited what I can change, uh, what I can change there. Okay, so not really, not, not a candidate. Pipeline, flow line, could I, that, could I change that? Yeah. By design, right? I can make simply a bigger flow line and a smaller, or a, a smaller, okay. Change. C CPL and CFL, okay? And remember here the equation is similar of the field, CPL, for example, P plem squared minus P separator squared, okay? But remember, in that case, we, we did the analysis in a way, right? We said from PR to PWF is very small, so probably if I do fracturing, acidizing won't help that much. From PWF to PWH is big, so maybe there it will help I use a bigger tubing. Okay. From PWH, so from P-plem to uh, P-template to P-plem is only five bar. So if someone comes and say, I want to use a very big pipe, you say it's not going to make much of a difference. And then from here to here, it might have some impact, okay? So in our case, for our case, so that this means increasing flow line and pipeline diameter might help okay but for example for just just um, however okay let's say however keep in mind Okay, um, 
keep in mind big pipe is more costly okay simply more costly to manufacture because you have to use more material have to use bigger um, uh, more costly to manufacture and also more costly to install okay because the pipe is bigger and it's thicker so you need a special vessel probably of a bigger size to lay it on the on the f on the sea of the bed so and this is more capex and at the end is less NPV okay that at the end there is reducing the NPV so be careful with that part and also another thing to keep into account is um, liquid uh, carry liquid carry over okay basically gas is never alone in the pipe you always have some liquid okay and that liquid can be um, some liquid can be so this liquid is typically condensate can be some oil I have from some layer can be water or it can be even production chemicals okay and inside these production chemicals I have corrosion inhibitor okay I have scale I have hydrate I might have wax so there are a few things whiskey that I inject into the the field the the stream to avoid this problem so the gas has to have enough enough strength or enough velocity to carry this liquid okay has to have enough and if it doesn't have then what might happen is you have accumulation on the pipe okay you will have some accumulation of the pipe and finally it's going to block okay and then the gas will have to increase its pressure because you have no flow of gas then the, it starts to increase and then whoosh, all of the sudden it flushes that that slug okay and then you generate something called slug slug formation okay so if you are in the separator okay and it's receiving the flow rate of liquid with time you might see no liquid then you see a batch of liquid then no liquid a batch of liquid no liquid okay so that might be a problem and you might want to have like a, a small pipe size simply to carry those liquids and avoid that problem okay yeah now what else can we change in our example Again, now we come with the core. We we can change number of wells, right? That's one of the things that that is used most is okay. Why adding wells? It's it's actually increasing plateau duration. We know like all the other, right, if we, for example, let's see here with time, right, we said we have our separator, p -sep. we said we had our p um, plem, then we have a p template. Okay, then we have our reservoir pressure PR. That was PWH. Uh, we have our PWF. Okay, sorry, P is the opposite. PWF. PWH. Okay, so what am I doing by, by, so that's the delta P of the choke, right? I have here, 
and simply when the two of them become the same that's where I have the end of the plateau okay what I'm doing with acidizing I'm moving this curve up right because the drawdown will be less and then you see this one automatically is moving up okay and then I'm I will have this intersection later in time yeah. now when I decrease the pipeline size then I'm lowering this one and by by impact I'm also lowering that one okay. when I'm decreasing the flow line side I'm increasing the flow line size I also bring these two together and then the intersection will happen at a later time okay now what am I doing by putting more wells yeah, Yes, reducing the well rate, that's key, okay? So remember the Q of the well, Q of the field is the same, and Q of the well is Q of the field by number of wells, okay? So remember, you have like Q for, for the IPR equation, CR, PR squared minus PWF squared to the power of N, okay? We said acidizing, is increasing that guy, but we could also decrease this guy in plateau. If we use more wells, then this number is the same. What I want to produce is always the same. So if I use more wells, simply this rate will be reduced. This is the same, this is reduced, therefore this will be. That's not so obvious, right? We have to make the uh, decrease or increase. Okay, increased. So P Okay. So if I decrease this guy, then it will be closer to reservoir pressure. So it has the same effect by adding the number of wells has the same effect with overall. Okay? Because you're reducing this difference, so you're reducing these two, you're pushing those two closer to PR, okay, and then that causes that the intersection will be <coughs> at a later time. You're doing all the effects at the same time. The CT, CP, uh, everything you're doing at the same time simply by reducing the rate. That's why it's, it's like a very effective measure uh, to prolong the plateau. Okay, I think that's all I had to say for, for today. Before we close, any question? Yes? Uh, uh, what parameters do you consider uh, between, if you're changing the number of wells? Uh, because at some point, maybe the number of wells is not going to make much of a difference. Yeah. So. It has a few things to do, but first is the recovery factor. Okay. You want to achieve, for example, you see an, an aerial, um, you have an um, aerial uh, description of your reservoir. You see some areas that are not drained, so you, you want to bring those areas into production. Uh, the other thing is um, maximum allowable rate. per well. You typically have a maximum rate and that typically comes, for, for example, if you have coning, okay, either gas or water coning, to avoid coning, you might have also erosion, okay, considerations, you might have this sand production formation. Okay. But really, what I take the decision is I can make a plot of NPV versus the number of wells okay and if I increase the wells I will get longer plateau this plot is for fixed Q plateau okay and then I increase 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 until I get that maximum and then it will start to decrease okay so from this point in this region here the extra production 
the extra production of the well or the additional plateau, let's say, the, let's call it like that, the extra plateau duration it is compensates or exceeds the let's let's make it uh, the income okay the income of the extra plateau duration it's uh is bigger than the extra expenses okay and in this side here the income of a plateau extension is less than the extra expenses. Okay, so you have all of these parameters. Usually, you want to see that you recover more or less uniformly. You don't leave any pockets with high oil or gas that you're not recovering. You have a maximum that is given by some issues with in the reservoir, coning, erosion, sand production, something to do with how much physically I can produce. But also, if all of that is in place, then I have to find the sweet spot. I have to find where really I don't want to put any more or any less, simply that I am in that point where the income is more than the cost. Okay. And you are going to make that plot, so it's good that you asked. You are going to make that plot in the exercise, and it's a lot of fun. Okay, you have to, you, have, you have to make a lot of runs, so it's a lot of fun. Any other question? <coughs> we didn't, you know, we didn't finish early. We are finishing almost on time. So, so today we saw. Uh, this plot, which is very important, I will say all of you should understand it, how to make it and plot it. Okay. Uh, we did some comment that our choke actually is big part of the time is in the critical regime. I showed you subs, very important to learn. I think you should keep it in mind for your work life. You're going to be excellent engineers. All of us are in a way excellent engineers. Okay. So we, we should benefit from using Excel. Then we talked about this production potential, a very strange idea, but basically the maximum that the system can produce with cumulative production. And we use that to estimate plateau duration for 20 and for 30. And we even use it further to get an analytical expression of the plateau of the plateau rate, okay? That I told you to verify. If, you can use that if and only if is linear. Okay, and if and only if there are no changes. If I add more wells, change the tubing size, do anything, that curve is going to change. And then you cannot use it anymore. You have to do com computation again. Okay, and finally, we said ways to prolong the plateau. And yeah, that's it. End of lecture. Okay, so see you next, see you on Monday, and have a nice weekend.